Today we will be discussing academic and professional writing. Our webinar will be moderated by Dr. Thomas Moriarty, a professor of writing and rhetoric in the Department of English and Comparative Literature, who also serves as a director of the Writing Across the Curriculum program. Dr. Moriarty works closely with graduate student writers and trains faculty to better support graduate student writing across the disciplines at San Jose State University. He will be a presenter today along with his colleagues, Michelle Hager, who is the director of the Writing Center, Amy Russo, who is a coordinator of the Multilingual Writing Support Services branch of the Writing Center, and Dr. Stephen Frazier, the chair of our Linguistics and Language Development Department. So let's give this a go. Before I present what I have to show you, I'd like to uh, give you a chance to meet sort of face-to-face, -face, the uh, panelists who are here with me. Uh, with me is Dr. Steph Frazier from the uh, Linguistics and Language Development uh, Department. He's the chair of that department. <laughs> Hi, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> also with us on the panel is Michelle Hager, who is the director of our University Writing Center. Yes. Hi, everyone. Good to see you today, virtually. <laughs> And finally, we have Amy Russo, who is the multilingual coordinator in our writing center as well. Lovely here in Fremont. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And welcome, everybody. Um, I have the great honor of giving you the first little bit of information. So I will do that right away. I'm going to uh, share my screen over here. I will also turn off my camera so you don't have to stare at me while I'm looking at my screen over here. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to be talking with you just for a couple of minutes about writing as a graduate student writer at San Jose State University. Kind of give you a basic idea of how to maybe orient yourself to thinking about all the writing that you're going to be doing at San Jose State. Now, as a graduate student at San Jose State, which I think is very good news, you might disagree with me, is uh, you get to do a whole bunch of writing in your two or three or four years that you're going to be spending with us at San Jose State. My fancy screen is, there we go. Uh, all the different types of writing that you're going to be doing as a uh, graduate student here include such things as lab reports, class papers, theses and dissertation proposals, and then the actual theses or dissertations that most of you will be writing or projects in your uh, different programs. You'll also have the opportunity to write conference papers, abstracts, progress reports, and more. And I know you're thinking, that's not good news at all. Who am I trying to fool? And the reason why is because writing is hard. Um, there is no writing pill. There's endless rules and expectations, and the rules change based on the situation that you are writing in. So how we write on the job, and I know many of us in graduate school are working for companies and are currently employed, it's different from how we write in graduate school. And also how we write in graduate school is different from how we wrote as undergraduates. And then all of us somehow seem to forget much of what we've learned and much of what we might actually be very good at when we're faced with these new and challenging writing tasks. And this is especially true when we move from professional and workplace forms of writing to the more academic forms of writing that we do in our disciplines in school. Now, why do we forget these things? There are these poor souls in my discipline of writing and rhetoric who study the transfer of writing skills. They look at what do people transfer from one task to another? Or what can they transfer from learning in one class to another or to a project to another project? And what they have found <coughs> is that writers need cues and reminders <coughs> excuse me, to activate previous writing knowledge and to apply them to new contexts. They've also found that every new context requires some new skills. So we are never coming to graduate school or any task or any class even fully prepared and ready to go. So good luck. Not really. There's actually a lot of things that we can do to be successful writers in graduate school, given this kind of situation that we find ourselves in. 
Number one, and I encourage you to start thinking about this from your very first class with us here in graduate school, is we can think about the ways we write in our disciplines as unique genres with unique rules and expectations and processes for producing those genres. And those rules and expectations and processes, they're learnable through practice and discussion with our instructors and also our fellow colleagues who are gonna be in our classes with us. So every time that we approach a writing opportunity, I like to call them writing opportunities, we can think about and articulate the expectations of the genre. We can think about both the substantive and the stylistic features of the genre, like how do people write in this field? Or what do people in this field research? What kinds of research designs do they use? What kinds of things do they study? And how do they study those things? And when you collect data in an engineering lab, what counts as good data versus if you're doing library research for your English thesis? What counts as good data or ideas? Also, we can think about how do people write in this field? How do we make our arguments? How do we contextualize our work? What citation systems are we expected to use? And also very importantly, we can think about the processes that people in our fields use to produce texts. How do people do research? How do they come up with the data? How do they analyze the data? What are the typical processes for writing texts in particular genres? A lot of us sort of think maybe we write from start to finish. Well, nobody in graduate school writes from start to finish if you're writing an article or a paper. We tend to write it from the inside out. In your engineering course or your science course, you're going to write your methods first. Then maybe your findings, after you have some findings, and then your analysis, and then you're going to go back and write your introduction. And these are the things that we can think about when we're faced with these new genres. We can also think about learning to write as being similar to learning how to play a sport, which means we learn how to write in new genres in process while we are doing it. So just like an athlete, we can't just watch film and then jump into a game and expect to succeed. We can't watch Steph Curry hit from downtown, you know, for three hours and then step out on the court and expect to be able to do the same. And nor can we just run drills. So I'm going to bounce the ball, keep bouncing the ball, and then get in the game and expect to succeed. But just like an athlete, we can stop and listen to our coaches, our teachers, in process as we write real documents for real audiences. And that's one of the reasons why in very many of your courses, you're gonna have a lot of writing assignments is because your professors know that that's how you're gonna learn how to be a good technical writer, or that's how you're gonna learn how to write articles in anthropology is by doing it. And as you're doing it, they can blow the whistle and say, now hold on, Tom, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that and see if it works better. Another thing we can do in our classes as graduate students, we can always ask for samples and examples. We can ask our professors, you know, what are the expectations for these genres? And can you talk to us in that way? Can you tell us the usual stuff about length, format, audience, purpose, and so on? But can you also maybe use this genre analysis guide that's always available from the Writing Across the Curriculum program to help us think about how do we go about making new knowledge in this discipline and how do we share it with all the different audiences? We can also see our writing as a recursive iterative process, which means it happens in kind of a messy way. It goes back and forth with starts and stops. It doesn't just happen in a linear, simple, I start writing, I'm done, and now I stop. We can break assignments and projects down into parts and also phases. And we can work on the different parts in whatever order makes the most sense to us, in whatever order makes us the most productive. So for example, you don't have to write the introduction first. It's always easier to write your intro last because then you know what you're introducing. It might make sense to write your things inside out, so to speak. That there is your recursive iterative process down at the bottom. What you see in the middle is this linear process that we all wish writing was, but unfortunately it's not, and instead, the real writing process is what you see down there at the bottom. Another thing we can do as graduate student writers is we can make use of every opportunity to get feedback on our writing. A lot of people find writing to be a very lonely, solitary activity, and it's not. 
we can get feedback on everything we write and even parts of what we write. We can get that feedback from our instructors. We can get that feedback from our peers and colleagues in class. And we can get that feedback from what I always think of as our super peers, mainly writing center tutors. The reason why you should do this as a graduate student writer and as any form of writer is because the most productive writers do two things. They regularly share drafts and partial drafts with instructors and their peers, and then they also understand that writing is an iterative recursive process. It's not a one-shot thing, and it's not linear. Finally, I'd like to encourage you, make use of all the writing support resources on campus. You're gonna be learning more about all the different writing support resources that are available for your time on campus. And I really encourage you to make use of them. You can meet with your instructors for content and organizational feedback. You can meet with your peers for the same thing and also correctness feedback, both formally and informally. You can form your own writing groups if you'd like. And finally, you can work with our Writing Center, which is a fabulous, wonderful resource that you're gonna learn a lot more about and other super peers to give you all kinds of feedback. So thank you very much and welcome to uh, San Jose State.